Welcome back to Crash and Eddie. I'm Eddie. Crash is not with us today. Word on the street. He had a little too much eggnog over the holidays. Apparently barrels of it. So, man, is this our first video of 2021? It is. So, an unbelievable amount of stuff going on. In crypto and otherwise, it is the 9th of January. Um, little market catch up. Eh, Bitcoin's up. Jeez, 15,000 since the last time we talked. <laughs> per token. Good lord. Uh, XRP still working through that lawsuit. But it's up, uh, I don't know, 50% since the last time we talked. Um, lots to talk about with that. This Today's video right now, and we might have another one with Crash coming in a little while. Um, so that would be good. But this one is mostly going to be about XRP. Um, I care a lot about that one. I'm not sure where Crash is on that. He cares about it, but I don't know how much. But anyways, um, and the reason I do is because I feel like, not like it's the best or anything like that, but, 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 but it actually is the best. But, you know, what is best? You know, you gotta, you gotta look at stuff and, uh, you know, it's the best in some regards, but I think it's more than the best. I think it's one of the, I think it's the most important one. I mean, Ethereum's obviously really important. Bitcoin is, is really important. Those two, you could argue, are more important. Um, but there's strange things going on with XRP, right? I mean, this lawsuit was just timely, and it's not just about Ripple. It's not just about XRP. This is about really cutting the utility of the space loose. Really. It, that's really what this seems to be about. And when this is resolved, that's exactly what it's going to be. So let's have a quick listen to a little King Solomon. He's got a great video. I'll drop the link below. Currency trial of the century. Uh, and, you know, this has larger implications than a lot of people are willing to admit right now. This is not just about Ripple. Uh, this is not just about XRP potentially being deemed a security. This has cascade effects that, that are going to um, dictate the way that blockchain, uh, you know, is, is utilized and developed upon from an... Um, from an innovation standpoint in the United States... Uh, over, over the course of the next year, like, like the year, like years, like maybe like the history of all of this may be determined by this one case. And certainly projects that are out there right now may be affected by this. Uh, I would say they will be, uh, depending on how this shakes out. So uh, the cryptocurrency trial of the century, some pretty decent article here, uh, just hours before Securities and Exchange Commission. You know what? Let me, I'll read that in a second here. I, I want to get into this first. Uh, I because because yesterday in my video I touched base on this base trend line that I've been watching um, for quite a long time on XRP. Uh, this one goes all the way back to 2014. We see the wick touch down uh, against this base trend line. We can see that we rode down against the breakout trend line, the bottom of this breakout trend line here, uh, and we touched on it in December 2016. Uh, then we broke out, you know, went on our parabolic run. All the way from, you know, at the very bottom here, 0 0.003 cents uh, up to that first initial peak of like 45 cents. Then we consolidated and we broke all the way out to, you know, $3 and whatever cents. Now we've we've consolidated while well, we were in a bear market here for quite some time. Touched on this base trend line again. And this has been the trend line that I've been watching. But it's also interesting to me that if you draw this trend line uh, from the previous bull to the break, or to you know, down through the bear, and then when we broke out of that. 
So, yeah, listen to that video. It's an interesting one. Um, King Solomon, super smart. I think he came out of that group from Britain. He was, uh, you know, he's obvious. I think he's an American, but he was in that um, SPQR media, I think. Um, possibly, but does a lot of deep dive, does a lot of research. Um, and uh, worth a listen We'll throw him in once in a, once in a while because he's obviously super smart and he gets what's going on uh, in the space in general. He's a little bit of a chartist too, not totally. He he does fundamental stuff, but some chart stuff too. So, anyways, um, yeah. So I mean, XRP. The timing of this lawsuit is just it's weird and. You know, some people think it's going to be, it's going to go to trial and there's going to be this, you know, like a trial of the century. I don't see that at all. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be settled and settled very soon because guess what? Here's the dirty little secret. They need XRP and they need the XRP ledger. XRP is just one piece of the puzzle. The XRP ledger is way bigger and there's a lot going on with it and they're clearly clearly working with um higher ups in banking i mean the the most elite of the elite i mean this is and i guess we'll play this it's you guys are familiar with um the bis right bank of international settlement Okay, so the BIS and their website's BIS.org. This Augustin Karsten, I think is his name. Augustin Karstens, yeah. Um, he is the head of the BIS. And um, he's interesting. I mean, there's a time when everyone met with... Uh, with Brad Garlinghouse, like all the central bankers, Christine Lagarde, this was early 2019. And he was there too. And right before that, and I think maybe even right after, he's just like, I don't, you know, he was against digital assets, period. He just was against it. And this is before a lot was going on with CBDCs, at least publicly, or at least it wasn't out a lot. You know, I'm sure they've been working on it for a long time. This has been all planned and put into place. But um, by the way, if anyone knows what a green swan is all about, that's kind of interesting. I guess that's just a money swan or it's all about it's all about climate change, maybe. Hey, drop a drop a um, comment below and tell us what you th know about green swans, if you can. Um, by the way, like and subscribe. That helps our channel. Um, so do not listen to this and not subscribe. That is not cool, and good things are happening, happening to subscribers from what I hear. We'll get into that, but it's kind of crazy. Anyways, BIS, check it out, nose around. This is basically the, the bank of central banks. Weird organization. Um, and they pretty much run the world of central banking is what it comes down to, you know. Mm, kind of. You know, who else is kind of running the world of central banking? Because they own everything, almost the feds. The Federal Reserve does. So, um, but, you know, anyways, so let's listen to this video of this meeting with Brad Garlinghouse. We're going to listen to the beginning and then the end of it a little bit. Here we go. Uh, but now we have someone from the private sector, uh, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, who is the CEO of the financial technology company Ripple. I will start off by uh, also thanking Charles, thanking Thomas, thanking Christine. Uh, it's an honor to be included. 
And uh, as was introduced, uh, I think they saved me for last so that I could uh, talk about the, the, the private sector version of this. I also start by kind of explaining the basics of what Ripple is and what Ripple is not. Uh, Ripple is a private company. We're based in California. Uh, about Remember to how it works, and you guys probably know this, but with technology, especially in the U.S., um, we let private companies develop technology and then we regulate it. That's how it's done. That's how it's always been done. And it's a good way to do it, you know? So that's really what's in process of happening right now. Ripple's developed the technology um, along with the rest of the cryptos, you know, whatever they've developed that actually has usefulness in a use case other than sending back and forth to people. Um, they're going to regulate to the best of their ability, including Bitcoin. Three or 400 employees around the world. And we're trying to solve a problem. We're selling technologies to banks and financial institutions to solve a cross-border payments problem. To be clear, we have not focused on the central bank digital currency issuance. Uh, our view is very much there needs to be interoperability globally. And even in a world of CBDCs, you still need interoperability to, to solve that problem. Uh, also, before I dive in, you know, my comments are more focused on kind of explaining how Ripple's approaching this, this problem as opposed to just CBDCs. But I thought it worth spending a moment on how we think about blockchain at large and why it is such an interesting technology and I think appropriate for central banks and commercial banks to be looking at. For me, the novelty of any blockchain technology is the ability for two parties to transact without trust, but with certainty. So today, anytime we transact, we are transacting through a central counterparty, whether that be a correspondent bank where Ripple is focused, or that be a Visa or American Express, what have you. The opportunity around blockchains is to change that dynamic, and I think many industries, whether it's payments, what we're talking about today, or securities, or even loans, any of those transactions, I think, can be uh, disrupted and made more efficient through blockchain technologies. All right, so with that, rates, the IMF and the World Bank that's sitting at a bank in the, the, a bank, large corporation where we use XRP to we'll fund real time on this too, you guys. instead of a problem in search of a solution. There's many times. All right, so back to you, Charles. Uh, thanks very much, Brad. Well, I'd, I'd like to hear more about that. I, it, uh, it certainly sounds promising, and, and I think we'd all like to know more about uh, how, you know, counterparty risk is. Hey, guys. What's going on? Uh, real quick, just let you guys know. Does that look familiar? Yep. Christine Lagarde, IMF. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys in the next one. So, yeah, um, not sure who even did this video, but, oh, that's Alex Cobb, okay. So, yeah, we'll drop, we'll drop that in, in below. You guys can listen to it if you want to listen to the whole presentation. But what blew me away with this is that Brad Garlinghouse got in a room with the most elite of the elite in all of finance. Forget about brokerage firms. Forget about, you know, commodities and the CME and the New York Stock Exchange and ICE and the Federal Reserve. He got in a room with the most elite of the elite. Why? Because Ripple is that important. It is that important. So don't ever forget that. It's it's. There's something special about this coin and this company. No startups get into that room. It just does not happen with the most elite of the elite. And the reason that that he did is because that's how important this project is. And that's how big of a deal it is. It's not, it's a gift at these prices for anyone who wants it. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to be public some people say it's going to be public it's not for us it's it's going to be 
you know, private, all sorts of opinions. Um, but it's very, very valuable. The company is and the token is. And I think it's all going to play out right before your eyes. And don't say, hmm, should have done something. You, the chance is here for the entire space, really. It's obvious what's going on. They're inflating the space. And I think it's going to bail out the world of the current crisis that is getting worse every single day. So, and you're watching it play out right before your eyes. So stay tuned but yeah that's what blew me away is is uh when he when i saw this it just clicked and it happened with augusta karstens too this guy went in not being a believer and not getting it and he came out and he did a speech maybe a week within a week of this he came out and did a little spiel and he was all bought into crypto and the reason why is guess what they have to buy into it. There's no choice. It's not, you're not getting around this technology. The game is over for central banks as we know them. Doesn't mean they're going out of, out of existence, but central banking is changing forever. And that's why they have to bring CBD season. So they're still going to force their currency that, you know, is constantly becoming less and less value. They're still going to force that on people in a way, but there's going to be ways around it. And that whole space and banking, as we know, it is changing forever. You can get on board now, or you can get on board later and be forced on board, but you will get on board with this because it's happening and there's no way around it. So, um, yeah, so that's why I am into XRP. I just think it's fascinating as far as what it is. And we're going to continue to do videos on this. And we're going to take this all the way through to this great reset for sure. We'll be talking about it because it's in the center of it. All these cryptos are, I mean, it, the crypto spaces, I should say. Most of them are garbage, but the crypto space is all involved with it, but um so we'll talk about a lot of them um and crash will talk about a lot of different stuff too but we're gonna every once in a while it's more than just a coin review with ripple for me it's an xrp it's it's about you know the deeper picture with this company and this token and the whole banking business so we'll get into other stuff but anyways so let's listen to one other one. And this one is from XRP right now. Let's just have a quick listen for a minute. Research, I've been here four years. I've been through the ups. I've been through a lot of downs. I've been through a lot of FUD. I've been through a lot of bull crap. And nothing has shook me out. This SEC news, I laughed at it, please. I know what XRP is. I read that lawsuit. It is nothing but bullcrap what they're trying to say. It's a joke. As we're on that topic, before we get going, I've seen a lot of people out there saying that Ripple owes us an explanation. Ripple does not owe us an explanation. What do you want them to explain to you? You want them to tell you everything that they're going to go use against the SEC all the evidence that they have you want them to put that on Twitter before this law case before this lawsuit goes down it's not how this works I will backfire on them Ripple has been nothing nothing but transparent to us and they don't even have to be we don't own part of Ripple we have nothing to do with Ripple we hold a digital asset a decentralized digital asset but by Ripple being the largest owner in that asset, they showed us transparency. They told us what they were doing with the XRP. They went through partnerships. They went through kind of a restructure because they didn't think something was going to work. They didn't have to do any of that. They don't owe us anything. And you know what? If Brad wanted to sell some of his bags and buy another asset, nothing's wrong with that. Diversify. You can diversify if you wanted to. No one's telling you to hold XRP. Go hold another coin. Good advice. 
always be diversified. Uh, by the way, no financial advice on this channel. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Give us a like and subscribe. We'll be talking about this stuff more. Um, interesting times, people. You're all, we're all lucky to be involved and to just be able to see this and uh, be part of it. And uh, fascinating times if you're in finance. Um, so much going on. We're going to try and have a great 2021. Uh, let us know if there's certain things you want us to talk about. Like and subscribe. That really helps us build the channel so we can keep going forward in a productive manner. Um, Crash gives his kindest regards. And we will be talking to him real soon. Uh, I think that's it for today. Let's talk real soon. We got a lot to talk about. Be kind and be productive. Bye.